Hi friends, I'm Nicholas Zacciani. Let's talk backstage. <laughs> In this video, I want to talk about being able to read basic build plans and how to create your own cut list. Those are two very important things whenever we're building in general, but also in theatrical carpentry. So let's take a look at a basic build plan. The first thing that you want to do is look at the title plate, either in the bottom right hand corner, it might be full length on the right side or all the way across the bottom. The title block should tell you what it is. This is a four by eight platform, what show it's for and the scale that you're building in. This happens to be in half inch equals one foot scale. If you look at the rest of the drafting, there are measurements on there, but you may not get all of the measurements that you need. So knowing the scale means you can take out your scale ruler and figure out exactly how big everything should be if it has been drafted in scale. Let's take a look at the different views that we have here. Your isometric view, your top view, and your bottom view. The isometric view, that is your 3D view. It's basically showing you what it's going to look like when it is finished. There usually aren't any measurements here. This is your reference point. That is what you are trying to build and accomplish. Then you have your top view, pretty self-explanatory. It's what it would look like from the top if you were a bird looking straight down on it. Then your bottom view, this is about all the information you need. You might get a side view sometimes if you have a specific height that you need to get to on a platform or something like that, you may at some point only have a top view or a bottom view. You're given enough views for what you need. The drafter isn't going to draft more than what they have to to get their point across. So in the top view on this platform, we're basically just seeing the plywood lid because that's all that we would see. Now, if we look in the bottom view, this shows all of our bracing and the layout that the designer wants or the drafter wants. This is important because this is going to inform our cut list and all the materials that we're going to need. So after you look at all the views, you want to see if there are any notes on there. And these are going to tell you specifically what the pieces are going to be made. It says that it wants to be made out of three quarter ply and that you want the bracing to be made out of one by six. Now we want to create a cut list. That is the biggest step because it's basically just breaking apart all of these views into a list of all of the pieces and materials we need. And in a cut list, you need three things. You need what type of material you're cutting. You need the measurements that you're cutting it to, and you need how many at that measurement you were cutting. So I like to start generally with the top view or the front view if it's a flat. So this, I'm going to need a four foot by eight foot piece of plywood, which is just a standard piece of plywood. I'm still going to put it on my sheet. So I'm going to put one because I only need one three quarter ply at four feet by eight feet. I have the number that I need. I have the material that it is, and I have the measurement I'm cutting it to. Now, the order of these columns doesn't necessarily make a difference, but if you're making a list, you want everything in the column to stay the same. So now that we have the lid, let's go into our actual bracing. This we're going to look at our bottom view for. So notice how the two longest pieces go the full length. That's my next piece. What pieces go the full length that I don't have to do any math on yet? So I have two pieces that are going to be eight feet long, right? Because that is the full length of the platform. So in my cut list, I'm going to put two because that's how many I need. One by six, because that's what we're making it out of at eight feet. Now let's find the next smallest piece and how many pieces there are. So with this platform, notice how all the inside toggles and the two outside supports are all the same length. So that's going to be five, counting them one, two, three, four, five. I need five of those. Now, if you're thinking they're going to be at four feet, you would be wrong because the overall width of the platform is four feet. So now that we're going inside of the platform to make this bracing, to make all of this framing, we need to take away those two eight foot pieces. So a piece of one by six is three quarters of an inch thick because lumber is shorter than what it actually says it is. So it's three quarters of an inch thick. So you have two of them right on the top and the bottom. You need to take away both of those. You need to accommodate for that width. So three quarters plus three quarters is an inch and a half. So you have to take away an inch and a half from four feet, which is three foot, ten and a half inches. And that is how long I'm going to cut those pieces so that when I cap it with the two eight foot pieces, it's four feet total. I don't have that measurement written on here. I was able to do that math because of the standards of things that I know to be true in building and carpentry. So for that piece, I need five. Again, we're doing one by six at three feet. 10 and a half inches. And that is my cut list. I have the number of all the pieces that I need, all of the materials I need, and the measurements that they're cut in. Now, again, each column you want to keep consistent. So if you start with the quantity first and the material and the measurement, that has to be the same all the way down. You don't want to start mixing those up because you might make this cut list and then give it off to somebody else. And then they have to cut it and they have to interpret what you want. So that's easier if you just make it consistent. Now, you can switch the columns. You could put the material first and then the amount and then the measurement. But again, you just need 
need to make sure you're consistent all the way down with that. Now, once we have the cut list, we can then cut everything that we need, get that all set, all labeled out, and then we can start assembling it and putting it together in the arrangement that this drafting says. So now we have these measurements, this two feet TC and two feet OC. That means two feet to center, two feet on center. Two center means from the edge of the one piece to the center of that middle toggle. On center means from the middle of one toggle to the middle of the other. We don't need that dimension for cutting the pieces. We need that dimension because that's how the layout is going to go. And if it says TYP there, that means typical. That means everything that's drafted like that is going to be that measurement. That's so they don't clog up this drafting and make it confusing. So we have our overall dimensions, which give us the capability to cut down and get all the pieces that we need. And then we have these internal dimensions that tell us how to assemble it, just like following IKEA instructions, except instead of having like eight pages to tell you how to make a box, this is one page and it's not broken down step by step because we don't necessarily need it because we have the layout. We have the map of how to build this. That's what these build plans are. They're just a map on how to build a piece. So that's what I have on reading basic build plans and how to make a cut list. I hope you learned something. If you do it in a slightly different way, I would love to hear about it in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye friends. These videos are made for educational purposes. Hopefully you learned something or it reinforced something you may already know. Now, this is just one way to do this and there may be other ways to do what I've explained in this video and I would love to hear about those ways in the comments. Just remember to be kind as you share your own experiences and expertise on the subject. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe and hit that little bell button to be notified of the next video.